The first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to say we're going to work out what phi is, and we're going to get Excel to do it for us. Excel is basically a big glorified calculator, okay? That can do loads of calculations all at once, as opposed to your your measly hand calculator, which can only do you know one at a time, right? This is a true multitasker. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The way to start a calculation in Excel is just to hit equals. Okay, so that tells Excel, hey, can you can you work out what I'm about to give you? Okay, so if you remember, we said that the uh, numerical value of phi was equal to this: one plus root five on two. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, one of the disadvantages of Excel is that it doesn't deal nicely with all of this like third notation, all that kind of thing. But it will give us the numbers. Okay. So I want to input this into Excel, right? Now because it's a fraction, and I want to divide this whole numerator by two, we're going to start with some brackets. Okay. So after your equal sign, you slap in a bracket. You say one plus. Okay. Now, um, if you look on your keyboard, because it's a normal keyboard, there's no square root button. Okay? So in order to write a square root, you write squirt, because that's the abbreviation for square root. Okay? So you write square root, and then in brackets, 5. That'll calculate the square root 5 for you, like so. Okay? And you'll see it's recognizing that you're asking it to do a calculation, because there's like funny colors and all that kind of menus come up. And now I'm going to close the brackets. So you'll notice I've got two sets of brackets there. I've got one around the 5, and then I've got the 1 plus square root 5. That's the numerator. So far, so good? OK. Now you'll also notice you don't have a division button on your, uh, on your keyboard, but that's OK. All you need is that slash. OK, not to be confused with the other slash. I can never remember which one backwards and which one's forwards. But anyway, that's the one you want. You want to divide by 2. Okay. So this is a calculation. We've told it to do a calculation by putting the equal sign. So if you hit enter, you get a number there. Now it says, on mine it says 1.6. Very likely yours will show more digits than that. The reason why, can anyone suggest why mine only shows 1.6? It's because my font's really big and my cell's really small. So if yours is the same, all you have to do is, to increase the size of a cell or the width of a column, um, you can see I just go to that border there and a little icon appears on your, on your mouse which says you can change the width. And there you go, I've got loads of digits there. In fact, if you go up to, if you've got your home ribbon up the top visible, okay, uh, I'm going to make this super wide for a second, highlight that cell, and then I want you to look for an icon that looks like this. Can you see that? It's pretty small, so I'll draw it bigger on the board for you. It looks like this. Uh, I think that's what it looks like. Based on the icon, what do you think that's going to do? It's going to increase the number of decimal places. Watch. Okay. Okay. So I've got loads of decimal places there. I just don't need to see all of them. Okay. All right. Now, I'm just going to put this back to a more reasonable size now. Uh, I don't even need that many. Okay. Whoops. Uh, let's do that. Okay. That'll do. All right. So now what we're going to do is, yeah. I saw that you had a bunch of zeros. Oh yeah, sure, okay. Is that where phi ends? Yeah, no it's not, it's where, it's where the computer ends. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, in a similar way to your calculator, um, working out a certain number of decimal places and then showing you only some of them, right? All computers are finite. But thirds go on forever, right? So if my computer stored all the digits, even of just a simple calculation, right? It would literally take all 160 gigabytes of the space on my computer just to store a single number, okay? And that's because thirds go on forever. Turns out, forever is a long time, okay? So it would take up all that space. That's why there is a limit. By the way, one more thing I'll show you that I got rid of by accident. If you ever see that, if you ever see that, all that means is the number you've got in there is too large or has too many decimal places to fit in the cell, okay? Because I made it too small. So there you go. So now we're going to explore three sequences, sets of numbers that have an order, okay? And here's my intention. Number one, I'm going to amaze you. Number two, I'm going to disappoint you. And then number three, I'm going to blow your mind. Okay, so ready? Here's what you're going to do. The first series we're going to look at um, is the Fibonacci sequence, okay? So <coughs> you saw these in the video, I hope. It was like one of the very first things that it opened with, okay? So how do we get, like you guys can work out the Fibonacci sequence, but how can we get the computer to do it for us? Okay. Here's where we're going to start. 
Um, first, I want to label all of my numbers, okay? So mathematicians often start with zero rather than one. So just type in a zero there. I've just got that as, um, actually make that n, n for number. So I've got zero as my starting point, and then I just wanted to count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for me. Okay. So in order, rather than me type out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm just going to say equals. We we'll start a calculation, and if I just hit equals and the up arrow, it's going to go to the cell immediately above me, like that. Okay. So now this this cell that I'm looking at right now will be that cell above me, and I'm going to say plus one. Okay. So all it's going to do is look at the cell immediately above and add 1. And unsurprisingly, you get 1. Okay, But here's where it starts to get useful. Once you press enter, you've got a 1 there. Just copy that. Copy that cell. And now if you paste it into a bunch of cells, so I've just gone shift to highlight those cells and I press paste, it's adding. It's incrementing. Okay, So that's pretty simple, right? In fact, I want more than that. I might go, and I might encourage you to go to maybe like 20. Okay, so I've got well, I've got more than twenty. But that's that's okay. All right. So, hands up, hands up if you're with me. If so far you're following, yeah, good. Hands down. I'll wait for everyone. I'll give you a couple of minutes more to see what's going on. Okay, when you're ready, when you've got what I've got on my screen, can you look up so I know that we're ready to proceed? Okay, we're almost there. Okay, stop typing for a second. Watch, even if you're not up to where we're up to, watch again for what I'm going to do in this next step, okay? What is the Fibonacci sequence? How do we actually calculate it when we don't have a calculator? Uh, we know, we define what the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence are, right? What are the first two numbers? There's actually two choices, which are both fine. Um, you can either say zero and, oops, zero and one, or you can say one and one. Okay? For our purposes, it doesn't actually matter. I'm just going to start with 1 and 1. Okay? Now, after you define the first two numbers, there's a simple rule that gives you the rest of the Fibonacci sequence, which is, if I want this number, the one that I don't have a number for, how do I calculate it? I, eat, I, I add up the previous two numbers. right? So let's think about how we do this in Excel. We want a calculation, so the first thing I should type is equals. right? And then I want the two cells above me, so I press up, to give me the cell above. I press plus to give it a sum, right? And then I press up twice to go the cell above that. Does that make sense? See what I've got there? We should all have the same thing there. I'm adding up the two cells immediately previous. And then I hit enter, and surprisingly, <laughs> it calculates it correctly, it's two. But now that I've done a formula, I can copy that, right? And then I can go to all these cells down here and just paste it, like so. And voila, there is the familiar Fibonacci sequence. Okay? And at least I'm calculating up to 46,368. Okay? Okay, so you got your Fibonacci sequence there. So now I've got to amaze you, okay? Fibonacci sequence. What does this have to do with phi? The answer is, well, there's a connection here, right? We're going to do another calculation. This time we're going to start with this cell. This is um, C5, in case you can't see what those highlighted cells are. I'm going to do a calculation which is equals, and what I want is the ratio, because phi is a ratio, right? Phi is a ratio. I want to get the ratio between successive or um, adjacent Fibonacci numbers. Okay? I want the ratio between each pair. Okay? So for instance, I'm going to look at these pair of numbers, what's the ratio? This pair of numbers, what's the ratio, and so on. So you think for a second before I put it on there, how would you get Excel to calculate the ratio between successive pairs of numbers? Anyone would suggest what I should do in this first cell? I said equals, now what? Yeah? Would it be similar to how you did the Fibonacci sequence that you did the previous two ones? Good, so I'm gonna get the cells that have the two previous numbers in them. So I'm gonna go left, that'll give me that number. Right? And then I'm going to divide by the previous number. Right? Now, the first two numbers are 1. So unsurprisingly, the ratio is 1. Okay? And as I copy and paste that down, I have another number. 2, because 2 divided by 1 is 2. But then the next number is 3 divided by 2, which should be 1.5. Right? Now, I encourage you, before you go any further, to widen this cell, because you're going to need it. Okay? I'm going to now copy this formula 
further down. I've got 5 over 3. That's 1 and 2 thirds. Now I'm going to have 8 over 5, which is 1.6, exactly. Then I'm going to have 13 over 8. 21 over 13 is starting to get messy because the denominators are starting to get messy. And I'm just going to go all the way here. All right, now what's going on? What's happening? I'm going to do a bit of a trick here. And I'm just going to freeze my top row. You don't need to do this. Okay. What's happening? As I take the ratio between increasing Fibonacci numbers, I'm approaching something. Right? Yes. That's right. I'm getting really, really close to phi. Look, there's phi at the top of the screen. Right? Have a look how close I'm getting. Actually, by this point, I'm already correct to how many decimal places? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe the eighth one, I'm rounding, yeah? Actually, the eighth one is correct if I'm rounding. Yes? Yes, I will. Let's come back up. How did I do this column? Column C. The way I did it was, I'm dividing, dividing, so that's why I use the slash. I'm using the slash. I'm dividing successive cells in the Fibonacci sequence, successive numbers, right? And then I take that and I just copy it all the way down. Yeah. How'd you get the third column again? Okay, so uh, you're talking about this one? So yeah. what I did was I said equals divide one Fibonacci number by the previous one, like that. B5 divided by B4. Oh, okay. Okay, and then you can enter and that's what you've got. And then once you've got that one formula, you can copy it and paste it wherever you like. And I've gone all the way down here. Oops. Okay. So that's pretty cool, hey? Look at that. The Fibonacci sequence has given us five just by comparing successive terms. That's pretty amazing, right? 